welcome or welcome back to Four of Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. However, what I do know is that hopefully you're watching me in black and white right now. Because this is the continuation of my pick challenge. There'll be a thingy on screen telling you what pick stands for. Because I chose a ridiculously long name for it. I'm not expecting it to be quite as popular as it has turned out to be. But I am extremely delighted that the beautiful Marlin is joining me again today in this challenge. So, if you want to see exactly which photo it is that's providing the inspiration for our looks today, and exactly what this looks like in glorious Technicolor, and then my friend you, you have the best seat in the house. Grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up and get ready, because here it comes. Hey, welcome back from the intro. This is a continuation of my pick series. So much easier to say. Thank you, Anya, for spotting that the initials made a word. Awesome. Uh, and I am collabing again today with the beautiful Marlin, one of my lovely Swedish friends that I have made since being on a YouTube here. And uh, this is the photo that we're going to be using. Now, obviously, I'm looking at it on my phone. So I've got a bit of fluff on my neckline as it was annoying me. Uh, and you can see it's a stunning photo of a wood at night. So there's lots of deep blues, lots of deep greens, that gorgeous sort of gold of the the tree this side and then this stunning glowing blue white majestic stack now Harry Potter fans could say this is a Patronus uh, those who love myth and mystery would say it's the ghost of a stag I just think it's a really pretty picture um, so I've grabbed two palettes. This one I've not actually used yet. This is the Earth and Ocean from Elf, which has got sort of blues, greens, and the, you know a gold that I can use. Um, and I'm also going to grab one of my palettes from Oh My Glitter OMG. This is the Queen Slayer palette, and as you can see lots of beautiful deep blues in that because there's only two rules when it comes to this now you can only use colours that you see in the picture so that's blue deep blue deep green a light tealy colour some lemon which is the light coming through the trees at the back the gold of the tree trunk there's some little yellow flowers at his feet and then the blue white of the stag. Now, I think I'm going to do a mainly blue look and concentrate on the stag because to me that's that's what calls me. I know the gold tree is there. I may I may just put a gold highlighter on to pull that element in. But for me, this look is going to be mainly blue. So. This is a teaching channel, and as such, I go a lot slower than most people do, because I want absolute beginners to be able to keep up with me, and also, I live with chronic pain, and as such, I can't blend as quickly as I used to. So. If I'm going too slowly for you, up here somewhere, is a speed widget. Please feel free to use it. I will not be offended because, sweetheart, 
unless you tell me you used it. I'm not going to know. Right, let's get you zoomed in. Face is washed, moisturised, SPF'd and primed. And the primers that I've used today, I've gone in with this W7 Princess Potion, which is their version of um, the Fasali. So it's like the pink, drippy one. Um, and then obviously I've gone over the top with my usual antiperspirant primer. Otherwise, nothing's going to stay stuck to my skin. Now, uh, I just want to briefly talk about eye shape. Uh, on my eyes, by the way, I have got Crow and Pebble. This is their Blank Page Primer in shade Cotton. I got a half a pot to start with, and you can see I'm very nearly out. But I have got a full pot for when I do run out, because this is by far the best eye primer I've ever used. Um, it doesn't go on sticky, it's dry instantly, so you don't have to set it, which means you can then start blending colours straight on it, so you get the full impact without having to worry about patting the colour on and then issues with blending and blending the colour away, you don't get any of that. They've got six colours, uh, the lightest is this white, the two deepest are a chocolate brown and a black, and then they've got three skin tone colours in between, so you should be able to find something that will work for your skin tone. Um, I do have a discount code with them, as far as I know it's not affiliated, they've not said anything about me earning anything on it, so I'm assuming that I don't. Um, so details of all of that are in my description box along with any other discount codes that I have. And they all clearly state and whether they are affiliated or not. Uh, and to be quite honest, it's only recently I've been getting affiliated codes. Um, and if someone offers me a code, if I'm satisfied with the company and you can, there's a film linked in my description called Can You Trust Me? which shows you the lengths that I go through before I will promote a code to you. I will only tell you I have a code. I will only accept a code from a company whose products I've tried and that I believe in. Right, okay, eye shape. Now, I've got deep set eyes and a lot of people with deep set eyes are mistakenly told or mistakenly believe that they have hooded lids. Now, I'm just gonna talk you through the differences because the way that you deal with applying makeup with a hooded lid and a deep set eye, sometimes called a double lidded eye, um, is very different. And I'm going to talk you through the tricks and tips for being able to follow any tutorial, whether it's aimed at hooded lids or not. Right. Now, when I look straight ahead with my brows relaxed, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. So I don't have hooded lids. It's only if your static lid completely covers all or part right the way down to your lash line of your mobile lid that you have either a full or a half hooded eye or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. Now when I've got a deep set eyes, if I cover the visible lid this side and close my eye, you can see I've got as much space again that tucks away. And then if I cover the upper lid and do the same, you can see I've got skin there that tucks back in as well. And those two areas of skin rub together, which is why we get the same issues. We get the transference of shimmer onto our upper lid. If we're cutting our crease, we can't just follow the socket line. We have to come up onto the upper lid. And even when we use glitter glue, we will normally get a bare patch right through here. Because obviously the skin is rubbing together. Right. Two different types of eye, two different ways of dealing with it. If you have a hooded eye, get something like this or a pencil brush and on your static lid sketch out a new crease line where you want your crease to fall. Obviously that's going to reduce the space between your new crease and your brow, so just use slightly smaller blending brushes than the person doing the tutorial and you'll be absolutely fine. Okay, girlies and chappies and androgynous, non-gender specific persons. Um, if you have deep set eyes like myself, what we have to do is when we're blending through our crease is just stop, sit, sit back, relax our brows and just check that we've gone high enough up with the blending that you can see it just above our crease. 
and that is really it. It's that simple. Right, enough blathering. I want to put some colour onto my eyeballs. Well, not my eyeballs, that'd be ridiculous. My eyelids. Right, I think actually I'll start off with one of my brushes from the AliExpress set. Um, I've got a, another film linked in the description which is the brushes that I recommend and this is one of the ones from AliExpress, the set that I mentioned. This is brush number 8. It is clean, it's just stained. And I'm going to start off by going into Oasis in this e.l.f. palette which is actually almost the same colour as my wall mm, hello is it? There we go. almost the same colour as my wall behind me as you can see right and I'm going to start off by just blending that very lightly leaving about four or five mils below the brow Um, where this is a teaching channel, I will still give you the occasional tip, but obviously this is one of my collaboration series, so I want to talk to you a little bit about Marlin. Now, I follow quite a few Swedish YouTubers. I'm not sure if I was Swedish in a previous life, or I'm drawn to the accent, or, or what it is, but um, I do watch a lot of Swedish YouTubers. Um, I started off with Angelica Nyqvist, from her I found Paulina, I found Jessica completely by accident when I'd uploaded my, these are all my palettes because YouTube when you put a video up or put in your suggested videos, uh, films with similar titles and tags, so that's how I discovered Jessica and her 1400 palettes that she had at the time, she's probably got about 1600 now. Um, and then through Paulina I found the other Angelica, Angelica Lirma. And I discovered Marlin through Jessica. And I discovered Linda, I believe it was either Jessica or um, Paulina that I discovered Linda through. Um, and I love all those girls. And I've collabed with quite a few of them now. And Marlin is, she, her channel started off in Swedish. And so a lot of her earlier films are actually in Swedish. Um, but she has been doing English films for some time now. Um, and she, she produces some of the most stunning super blended looks that I've ever seen. Um, she's not afraid of colour at all. Uh, I'm just sitting back and checking because where your eyes are not symmetrical, unless you're James Charles and you photoshop them, you do have to sit back and just check that you've got the same sort of shape both sides. Because sometimes one shape has to be slightly different to the other to look the same when your eyes are relaxed. Okay. Um, yeah, and you know, Marlin has numerous children, and she has a full-time job, and she still manages to produce some epic YouTube films. I mean, I thoroughly enjoy just sitting down and watching her films. She's a very calming, restful manner. Not quite ASMR, but still very calming and very, you know, you sort of, if you feel like you're sitting down chatting to a mate or watching a mate discuss their new makeup with you, which is awesome. Um, I absolutely love the girl to bits. Okay, I'm going to go in with um, a little bit of Abyss, just to deepen this up a little bit, because when I go into um, the Queen Slayer palette, those are all satins and shimmers, so I just want to get a couple of mattes down first. I mean, I've quite, a, I've, I've done all shimmer looks in the past without any problem at all. But for this one, I do want to get a couple of matte shades down. 
and you can see these are blending out really beautifully on this primer and uh, not a huge amount of fallout if any actually just a little bit there not bad at all so I'm just running this through the crease bouncing it in the middle obviously coming away from the eye and blending in that direction and coming back towards the eye and blending in the opposite direction um, because I'm you know I'm 45 years old I've lost 13 14 stone over the last few years and the skin on my eyelid moves so by doing this you're very very gently moving the eyelid around and stopping it from ending up with huge white patches so yeah this is going to be a mainly blue look that I'm doing today because as I said you don't have to use all the colours in the photo and I was really drawn to the blues in this one and the stab I think is such a majestic creature so so yeah, if you haven't already watched Marlin, once you finish watching me, do please go across and check her video out. You won't be disappointed, I promise you. Um, you I, I can probably place bets that if you like watching me, you're going to love watching her. Um, and she does all kinds of different films. And she's uh, doing a collab series at the moment with Jessica. So, I was very pleased that she managed to find a little bit of time just to pop this one in. Continuation of our series together. Okay, so you can see that's, that's actually blended out really, really nicely. I just used the same brush for both shades. Didn't bother cleaning it in between because I was going into a darker colour of the same sort of tone, so just deepen this side up a fraction. Okay. Now I'm gonna clean the brush. I've got a microfiber cloth here that I use. Um, I find it's more gentle on the bristles than a colour switch is, especially if you're using a natural hair brush. I mean this isn't this is synthetic, but if you are using a natural hairbrush, I would absolutely recommend that you use um, a microfiber cloth rather than um, a colour switch. Right, I'm just going in with a Morphe M562, which, clean but stained. And I'm going to go into Queen Slayer palette. And I'm going to pick up some of uh, Let Them Eat Cake, which is a beautiful sort of deep petrol blue. And I'm going to buff this very lightly through the crease, just so I get as little fallout as possible through there. I do want to deepen this look up a tad so just going to blend all the way along that line with this little brush I love this little brush if you've got smaller eyes um, this is fantastic for, for blending um, I saw Nikki Raven use it I thought I'd grab one to see. It's weird, I mean, some of Morphe's brushes are terrible and some of them are okay, and this is one of the ones that's, that's okay. So, obviously, I'm getting more fallout from this because it's a satin and you're not expected to blend satins, but you can. That's, my, that's one of my tips to you today. You can actually blend any shade so long as you're using the right sort of brush. And what will happen is you'll get a heck of fallout like this where you're brushing away the shimmery element but then you're leaving behind, if it's a good shadow, you're leaving behind the base colour like that. 
you can see that's really giving it a much more dramatic look which is exactly what I wanted same thing, so this one because I'm blind in this eye I can actually close the eye and show you a little bit easier what I was doing because obviously if I, uh, if I close the other eye not a lot of makeup happens. It's okay if I'm just sort of blending along my crease line or, you know, because I can rely on muscle memory for that. But, um, yeah, any kind of detail work, if I close this eye, you're not going to see much makeup. So, again, blend along this line. Now, I do have an issue with this eye where I've got very, very deep creases just in this corner here when my eye was pulled around by the ophthalmic hospital when I was five years old. And you can see it leaves me with that tiger striping effect. Now I don't have the same issue with the other eye. Um, and the circular movement will deal with most creasing. But if you've got super deep creasing like that, the only thing I can do is actually pull the lid out, which I hate doing. So do not do that unless you absolutely have to. So again, just buffing that through, giving myself a little bit more drama. Talking of drama, there's a channel on UK TV called The Drama Channel. And I don't know whether I'd signed up to a mailing list of theirs or something, but very randomly in the post yesterday, got a mug through advertising Jane Eyre, their new series that they're going to be showing on the drama channel. And I'm just like, um, okay, thank uh, Initially when I opened it, I thought, oh God, what have I ordered at three o'clock in the morning with my pain insomnia again? Because this is my issue. Although I'm on a low by this year, there are still times when I've woken up at ridiculous hours of the day in pain and whilst sort of half asleep and in absolute agony I've ended up accidentally buying something which I don't really find out about until I either go overdrawn or um, the item arrives in the post so initially I was like oh god this looks like a mug what have I bloody ordered now it opened up and it was Jane Eyre from the drama channel and I'm like well I know for a fact I wouldn't have ordered that, so what on earth is going on? Very confusing. There's nothing in there to say this is our new, new series that we're doing or anything. The only thing was there was a care instruction about don't, don't microwave it and hand wash it. And I'm just like, oh, okay then. Alrighty. You know, it's only newly married people or people that have just newly moved in together that have got a matching set of mugs. Everyone else has got, everyone that I know anyway, has got a mishmash of different mugs because they've got broken over the years and you get like the odd one or two here for presents and random things from TV channels. Right, what I'm actually going to do, I've got a pad here with some micellar water on. I'm just going to tidy up the edges of this look just before I do the lid can't decide actually I think I might put some gold on the lid for that other tray I know I said I wasn't going to but I am um, the more I look at the picture on my phone the more I'm tempted to pop a little bit of gold on the lid. <clears throat> so I'm going to go back into the Earth and Ocean palette from e.l.f. And I'm going to grab a Morphe, what's this one? M321, which looks like this. And I'm going to go into Sahara which is a greeny gold. I don't want to go into a pure gold because I still want to keep the sort of kind of a grungy look that I've got going on here. I'm just gonna I've got a little mirror here that I'm gonna look down into what on earth have I done over there? Really good question. 
There we go. It's <laughs> better. Like I said, I have a small mirror I'm going to look down into here so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm applying this dry. So I'm not going in with it wet. Because I want to see how it can um, perform without wetting it. And it's actually going on really nicely. I like that a lot. I'm going to change my mind now. I'm just lightly buffing where the two colours meet just to blend that colour in. And go back in again. Do the same thing on this side, but I do have to stretch this lid out, unfortunately. Because if I don't, it ends up packing loosely into the deep creasing and then through the day it ends up as I move my lid cascading down my cheeks which it's not the look I'm going for for today again just blending where the two colours meet at the edge there just to soften the look a little bit I really like that Oh, I like that a lot. Right, I'm going to pause you while I go and put some foundation on. And I'll be back to uh, continue this eye look with you. So you will see me instantly. And I will see you the very next time that I push the record button. So I'll see you right now. I am back. Right. I am going to go back into the Queen Slayer palette with my flat top brush I showed you earlier. And I'm going to go into the shade Queen of Queens, which is a, a purpley blue, like a, a violetty blue almost. I'm going to run that along the lower lash line. I love this sort of brush for getting up under your lashes, it's really good. Although I have poked myself in this particular eye quite a few times because obviously no peripheral vision and I'm relying on muscle memory and the viewfinder quite a long way off when you haven't got contact lens in. Okay. <clears throat> Clean the brush off. And I'm going to grab, this is actually a brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl Swamp Queen palette. I love it though because it's flat on the top but it's really thick and chunky so it's great for getting up under the lashes and buffing out. But you can use like a smudger brush or um, a tight pack pencil brush or something to do the same thing. And I'm going to go into Oasis, the first blue that we used. And just use that really softly buff out and soften that lower lash line. When you're doing this, don't go beyond the edge of the eye there. Otherwise it starts to look scrappy. Okay. Right, now I'm going to try something. This is either going to make the look or break the look. Huh. Right. I have got a Suva Hydroliner in a silver called believe it or not, silver lining. Now these are activated by uh, water, but I usually use a setting spray. 
it's alcohol based and then it dries up quicker when you're putting the lid back on. And this is actually an artist's brush in size number one. You can see how fine that is. I'm just going to run that moisture around on the top and mix it up to a good old paste. And then I'm going to grab my little mirror again to look down into. I'm going to do a bit of an experiment on this eye. Forgive me if I'm not too chatty while I'm doing this bit. Slightly too far, got my silver water and just I'll go back and with a little bit of powder later and uh, remattify the edge. Now I'm going to try something a little bit different. So there's your normal wing, but we have a stag with horns. So I'm going to attempt to recreate that on the eye itself. What do you think? quite like that. And now I'm going to do exactly the same thing on this side. It's easier to show you with this side because obviously I can close it. I love these Hydra liners. This is the first one I've tried. But I'm absolutely going to be picking up some more. I mean, I, I do use the Jeffrey Liquid Lipsticks as colourful eyeliners, and that works super well as well. But I absolutely love using these artist brushes rather than a fine liner brush because you can get them much finer and therefore you can get a lot more detail with them. What do we think? Do we like? Do we not like? I quite like. Right, I'm just going to clean this brush off on the microfiber cloth. I'm actually really happy with that. Looks a little bit like lightning, but also looks a little bit like stag. Right. That was a little bit of fun. Right, let me grab this. This is a, believe it or not, it's a lipstick brush that I bought from eBay probably 10 years ago now. And I'm going to go in with the Ofra Nikki Tutorials highlighter in Space Baby, which is one with the blue shift. Because where I've put the greeny gold on my eyes, I don't think I'm going to do the, the gold highlighter after all. I think I'm going to concentrate on making a beautiful white icy blue now obviously I like to bring it along under the tear duct as well and just buff it in with the colours under the eye you can just do the tear duct if you want and then top 
tiniest little smidge just up under the tail of my brow because I don't want to take away from those beautiful, beautiful horns. I'm on the horn of a dilemma. I'm so sorry, that was terrible. Uh, standing joke is that my husband and my brother-in-law could uh, quite happily write jokes for Christmas crackers because Right, I'm going to pause you one last time, I'm going to bung some more of that highlight on my face, I'm going to put some mascara on, some lippy, do something with my hair, I'll be back with a finished look, so please don't go anywhere. I am back. Uh, I used the Essence Slash Princess mascara, the green one, I got this in green and like a coral and a purple, all different shape brushes but basically the same mascara formula. Love those. The Lippy is a MAC called Matte Royal. I just thought it accented the eye look perfectly right. I'm going to stick the picture back up there. What do you think? Do you think I've interpreted the picture okay? What would you have done? If you were doing this picture which palettes would you have chosen? Let me know in the comments box, I'd be really interested to know. Um, and would you have made it blue focused or would you have gone more down the green and gold route? Would you be nutty enough to draw stag's antlers on your eyes? I get the feeling that could just be me. Right. If you're one of my 4F babies, please double check you are still subscribed because YouTube is still unsubscribing people at a rate of knots. The other day, I had five new people join from a collab and they all told me they were joining. Within a matter of hours, three people disappeared off my list and then the next day, another one went. So out of those five that I gained, I actually only gained one. Now... It looked like it was, it, they all seem to still be subscribed. So it's obviously older or longer subscribed people that are getting removed. Um, I have had comments that people have said, oh my goodness, I didn't even see this video of yours come up. So again, YouTube are just not being helpful to the smaller creator at all. If your name's not James Charles or Jake Paul or Tanner Mojo, they don't want to know basically. Um, so yeah, it's, it's very frustrating, so please double check you're subscribed, double check that you've still got the notification bell rung, and double check that it says all for when it comes to the notifications. Um, if you wanted to help out by liking, commenting and sharing this video, and that would also be greatly appreciated, and once you've done all of that, I'm going to need you to go over to Marlin and see exactly how she has interpreted that picture. Now so far, I think this is episode 28 of my series, so far there's only been two looks that have been similar, but even they were different. So far all the others have been really really opposite, you know, we're, we're it's one of the reasons I started this series because I was always fascinated at how big beauty gurus, when they were getting PR, would all choose different elements of the palette when they were doing their first impression. And that interested me because I'm like, well, they've got exactly the same palette in front of them and yet they're drawn to different colours. So I thought, what if there was something where you were restricted to the number of colours you could use? So only use the colours that are in the, the picture. You don't have to use all of them, but you can't add anything in. So like I couldn't put a red in there. And I, I couldn't put a, a, purp, a, you know, a proper true purple. Bluey purple I can get away with because of the shadows. But a true purple, no, I couldn't do that. Um... 
and I sort of I, I floated this idea with a couple of my friends on YouTube and they're like yeah that sounds like fun I'll do that with you and I'm like oh fantastic I did not expect it to grow legs and run the way it has I absolutely love it uh, and I'm so happy that not only are my fellow YouTube friends enjoying it but so is everybody else out there uh, if you are new here and you have come over from Marlin's channel, hi, hello, welcome. I hope you enjoyed this. If you've made it this far through the film, I'm guessing you liked it just a little bit. Just a little bit. Uh, I'm a slightly nutty, half Welsh, half Yorkshire bird who lives in the south of England. Uh, I witter on about anything and everything. I'm told my voice is soothing and that I can be quite funny. That is something you will have to decide, because an audio sense of humour is very different. Seriously though, if this is your first time here, I would love it if you would also like to join the 4F family by clicking that subscribe button. It's still free. Uh, turning it from red to grey. And then don't forget to select all notifications. And uh, hopefully YouTube will let you know every time I upload another one of these films. Right, it's quite enough for me for today. All that remains for me to say, as ever, is you'll stay fabulous and I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Rude, fun. Rude. I'm busy.